Hi there, welcome to this build of a 1950s flying wing designed by Peter Fisher, the Ion. And we're building this Ion from a great set of plans that I managed to get from a website run by a guy called Derek Scott. And if you want the, the plans and the templates, have a look in the description below this video and there'll be a link to his website. The plans are really good and they're a very reasonable price, really cheap. And I think he gives the money to charities, which is great. Now, in the last couple of videos, we've got the wing skeletons built. And these are looking really good. I'm really excited about these. I just love the tapered uh, wing and also the colour, the swept back nature of the wing, particularly that leading edge. And what we're going to do in this video is we're going to strengthen these wings. We're going to add a little bit of bracing. We're going to add a little bit of sheeting ready for when the fuselage goes on top. And actually before we add that sheeting on, we're going to get the wings joined together. Now, there's a little bit of a dihedral at the wing tip, but only very tiny. I mean, it's, uh, it's less than a quarter of an inch. It's, it's four millimeters which is uh, kind of I don't know I don't know what that works out to. it's it's half a degree angle anyway on that central rib so it's just very very small so we're going to get I think we'll do the cross bracing first and I've done a little bit of bracing there and that's possibly all I'm going to do I've done it on that one wing and if we look at this wing first the left hand wing you can see there's quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of movement there and just putting in those three pieces of what is it 1 8 by 3 16 it's made a huge difference it's really rid made that a lot more rigid now this piece here is shown on the plans but on the plans it also has a piece of sheeting in there of I think it's plywood and that was to carry a, a, a wheel as sort of a, a landing wheel on the t on the wing tip there but we're not going to put in that plywood and we're not going to put in the wheel uh, I'm going to make some the fins as shown on the plans um, some terminal fins here on either side and they will act as skids I fly off grass so really putting those wheels on is is not going to be helpful at all and if anything they could get caught in the grass so I think just having some some skids on there like that will will be uh, will be sufficient. So I've got that bracing in. I'll get the bracing in on the other side, and I think also we've got these pairs of uh, spars here for the wing, and I'm going to be putting a little bit of sheeting on certainly on this rear one, probably on the front one. They're, they're both made up of medium balsa, whereas the, the main spars are a hard balsa. So I may not do those. Um, I'll have a look and see how it feels. But I just want to strengthen this end a little bit. If we're going to have these fins, they're going to be acting as, as kind of skids. So just strengthening that just a little bit. I think once we've got that done... Um, I don't think I'm going to add any more bracing. It, it's, it's always a difficult decision because I always want to put in a little bit more strength than shown on the plans. Because often these plans, they were drawn up in the 40s and 50s, 30s as contest models. So they wanted to keep them as light as possible and not necessarily durable and resilient. And so I just want to add a little bit of resilience to, to the model but not making it heavier. Obviously it's going to be a little bit heavier, but I'm choosing um, smaller bits of balsa, lighter balsa, and just putting them where I think it's absolutely necessary to really keep that wet weight down so we end up with a good flying model. So anyway, I'll get some of the bracing in, get some of the sheeting on, and we'll have a look at what we've done before I set this up to join the wings together. Right, well I've done all of the, um, the bracing and the shear webbing that I'm going to do on these wings for now. And you can see on the main spar here, 
I've put shear webbing all the way along, only on this side, just not on the uh, on the front edge, just on the back edge. And this is medium 116 balsa, so 1.6 mil. And when you put on the shear webbing, it's important that the grain goes vertical like that, not horizontal. If it flexes and it's horizontal, it could just split and it's a waste of time. Much stronger vertical. I've also put a little bit of shear webbing on the front of these spars here and a little bit on the back and a piece on the front here just to try and strengthen this end and I might end up putting a gusset in as well just because we've got that fin or skid that's going on the end there that's going to take a bit of pressure. But putting this on has not added a lot of weight. I've got some scales here and I weighed it before and after and it's added about two or three grams to the weight of the wing. So that would be what five or six grams in total. But it's really strengthened that. It's made it a lot stronger. So the model should be a lot more resilient in the long run, hopefully. I haven't done the central section here, and I may, well, I probably will do something with this, but I want to get the wings joined, and I want to get the fuselage on, and I'm, this is going to be kind of the radio bit bay here around the CG. So I don't want to sort of limit myself with uh, access here. I'm not sure how it's going to go. And we've got engine mounts that will come in from the front. So we'll look at that later. The other thing I've done, and I still need to do, is to sand the underside just to run this over and make sure that the underside of this is really nice and flat and there's no high spots or it's on the underside so I suppose it's low spots that's going to cause the wing not to sit nice and flat on the bench when we're setting out the dihedral and getting these glued together. Now I think that's probably all to say now until, oh one last thing as well I don't want this shear webbing to show up, particularly be when I get the covering on. And what I'm going to do, you can see there's a, a bit of an edge there, and it is set down from the top of the spar, I think that shows, but also I'm just going to go along with a scalpel and just take the edge off, I perhaps need a slightly sharper blade, just take the edge off there, just chamfer it a little, and finally I will just sand it as well just so we haven't got that sharp edge it just looks a little bit less prominent under the tissue and the uh, probably laminating film that I'll put on I haven't said much about how I'm going to cover this yet but it probably will be laminating film and a nice Japanese Asuka tissue so I will get the dihedral blocks um, some four mil blocks to stick under the tips and we'll get this set out and glued together Right, well I've got this all set up now and I'm ready to glue it. I've got four mil lifts under each wing tip and they're nice and square on the bench. They're not lifting up front or back, just nice and square. We've got the trailing edge here and the whole of the central rib section nice and flat on the, uh, on the bench. There's nowhere high or lifting up. I did have a slight problem when I first started clamping this. I clamped the back and it was fine. But when I clamped the front here with these clamps, it just lifted this back up just a fraction so there was a little bit of clear space under it and I didn't like that. And I trimmed these spars and I trimmed these spars here and that stopped happening. It was just kind of pulling this together was just lifting that up a little bit. So it's something to be aware of. But that seems lovely now. I'm really pleased with it. So I'm going to CA this and I'm going to CA along the top here and so that it doesn't open up and I can CA the bottom I'm just going to take a pin and I'm going to on the lower section of the ribs I'm just going to put a pinhole and I'm going to wick some CA through just to get a few points along there so that the two ribs actually glue together properly. Then I'll take it off the board, turn it over and run CA along the whole joint. I think running CA between these will be fine and 
particularly as I'm going to wick it through a few small holes in the ribs. I think if I try epoxying it or white, you know, using PVA or aliphatic resin, it's just going to get a little bit messy and I think I think it'll be fine with CA. So we'll get that done and then it'll be really exciting to lift this off the board and just see how the whole wing is looking. Just one last thing I would say about when we're pinning wings together like this. It's good to be able to set this out without any pressure. So I'm not putting weights to keep the tips from lifting up. When I clamped it, I didn't put weights on the back here to hold it down. Because if we do that, as soon as we take the weights off after we've glued it, it's more than likely going to spring back up. It needs to be fairly relaxed and this is fairly relaxed. We can lift the wing tips up and that. The only bit that isn't and that's held tight is these two central ribs together that we want to glue. <laughs> well, look at that now. Doesn't that look a fantastic wing? I am so excited with every development of this wing, but we've got it nicely glued now and I don't know whether we can, I can line that up, I don't seem to be very good at lining it up with the camera but hopefully you can see that is nice and flat and it's, uh, if we put it on the bench we've got a little, little bit of a lift now on each wing tip, just that four millimetres. Now the next job is we've got to put in some sheeting and the sheeting has kind of three, three purposes I guess. One is it's going to provide some strength to this centre section. If I try and flex this, it's quite rigid on the wings, but there is a little bit of flex here where we haven't got the shear webbing, and um, it's just, I, I mean, it, it doesn't feel bad, but it, it'll be improved by a little bit more strength. So that's one of the reasons we're doing the sheeting is to strengthen it. The other reason is we need to provide, when we've got the fuselage on here, we need to provide uh, something for the fuselage to glue fixed down on. And there's no fuselage on the underside, it just sits on the top of the wing. So on the back section we have some sheeting that comes along either side like that where the fuselage is going to be. And that will provide a twofold uh, purpose. One will be for the covering to join onto, to attach onto, but also for the fuselage to glue down onto. So there's going to be two pieces on the back. We're then going to sheet this front section out to this rib R3 on both sides, I think. I need to think about that uh, a little bit more, but I think we will. But anyway, the sheeting essentially there is for the strength, it's for the uh, covering material to attach to, and again, for the, the fuselage to sit on. So we're going to shoot some of this front section and under section as well. And I think we might end up sheeting the whole of the underside because I want to make a hatch on the underside for the radio gear and the, ser well, the servos, uh, the receiver and the battery. I don't want to do it on the top because this has some lovely clean lines with the cockpit and the fuselage and I don't want to kind of have that um, broken really with a, a hatch so it's going to be hidden underneath. Um, so we'll, we'll see how that develops as we go on but I, I'll start to get on some of this sheeting now and we'll come back and see how it looks. Well, I've now got those bits of sheeting finished down this central section, ready for the fuselage to sit onto there. And I'm quite pleased with how that's gone. It still needs a little bit of sanding just to make sure it's okay to accept the fuselage sides and the cross formers. The fuselage sides will maintain the shape, the curvature of the wing. So these thin strips of balsa will just need to be pushed up and glued onto that fuselage side but that's for another video anyway so we've got that done and on the underside here I've got a couple of gussets a bit more strength I've got some tiny little bits of balsa there I don't know whether they show up just to increase the surface area gluing these on just to make it a little bit stronger also got the sheeting just on the nose on the underside there 
and uh, the, there is quite a bit of work to be done on the underside. I'm going to make a hatch here somehow. I haven't really given that a lot of thought at the moment because I want to get the, uh, the fuselage done, the engine mounted and then we can see where we're going to put the radio gear which I suspect is going to be around there where the CG is on the CG because this would have been made and balanced without the any radio gear because it was free flight so I think adding them on the CG is probably going to be the thing but I'm going to draw this video to a close now and the fuselage and the engine mounting is going to be the next video or the next few videos we'll well, I'll have to have a think about that because I'm not sure which is the best thing to do next. It's, it's got to be the fuselage sides, I think. But anyway, I, this has been really exciting for me, pulling this wing together and getting this uh, sheeting on. Because we've actually got the, um, the shape of the flying wing now. And, and we get a really good idea of what this is going to look like. And once we get that fuselage on, it's going to look really sweet. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed it. And I hope you'll come back and see how we get on in the next few videos pulling this uh, fantastic sort of futuristic 1950s ion together. Thanks very much.